Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan with a 10,850 pound Eagle HT 31 MB. And I I need I need your input. What do we call this thing? Do we call it a uh, an office model, a middle den, a second living room, a craft room, a bunk room? Or is it a little bit of all those things kind of sprinkled together? Because the thing is, I could see this working for a solo run around work camper. I could see this working for a traveling couple who maybe has some occasional guests or needs that mobile office space, like travel nurses or something like that, or project managers. I could definitely see it working for a family. I think if you've got people like teenagers who are bigger than most bunkhouses tend to fit, but they're going to be out of the house in the next couple years, but you don't want to have to buy two RVs. You want to get your second RV the first time. This design, this concept works very, very nicely. Jayco's decked her out with, well, all the Eagle doing Eagle things like carpetless slides. It's got a 30,000 BTU air system, the way that we have it optioned here today. Auto leveling and absolutely unrivaled two plus three year warranty. There's a laundry list of best in class qualities that go into this thing, but again, I'm kind of curious about your feedback. Like, what do we call this? Like, how would you use it? Would it be the den? Would it be the bunkhouse? What's your vote? Now, I'm actually kind of recording this today as a bit of a companion piece. We have a full walkthrough video of uh, another 31 MB Eagle HT that already landed here at Halitz previously but it was in the uh, modern farmhouse decor and it had uh, a couple different features, some of which hadn't quite yet gone into the update cycle at Jayco. So I wanted you to get to see, first of all, a little more current look at these, but also a look at the all uh, other decor because uh, a lot of manufacturers, they only give you one look and Jayco does allow you to have two. So if you like the whites and the grays of the farmhouse, after you've watched this video, check the link in the video description where you'll be, uh, be able to see all that. Or I tell you what, this warm, welcoming, it's called American Craftsman Decor. It has, it's really been growing at me. Now, let me get you up close a little bit here because there's a lot of light pollution in the camera right now. Just to kind of give you a better look at like, here's what the colors of all this actually look like. It is rich. It is like peanut buttery. I, uh, I, I love the look of this. And I like Farmhouse a lot, but it, it almost strikes me as like, I feel like there's a little bit of farmhouse fatigue out there and this nice warm look is really kind of growing on me right here. Now this layout's a little different. If you notice, there's a kitchen pantry kind of inside of the super slide over here on the door side. That does kind of change the seating that they had available in this. And what they did here is they kind of said, hey, let's go talk to our friends over at Jayco Toy Haulers and see what kind of solutions they have. And they come up with this like, four-seater party couch and I'm a big fan of this thing all four sections can recline the right hand section is fully reclined by the way it is a wall hugger the middle section is just inclined with the feet up the two middle seats have full down cup holder uh console armrest then on the left is we're gonna call it the control group just a single standard chair but one of the other reasons I wanted to put this footage together is some folks uh, watching our previous video said, okay, if I'm sitting on chairs one and two on the right, I can see the TV. But over here, isn't the kitchen in a way? Well, you know what? I don't know. Let's take a look and we're gonna do it live. So if I park my sweaty fat dad butt over here on seat number three, here's the angle that we're looking at. Now I'm pretty tall, so I'm going to move the camera down here, which is like, this would be the height of a little grandkid. So. It is possible that maybe there's something on the kitchen counter that is kind of in the way a little bit. And now if I slide my fat dad butt over here right against the wall, which by the way, it is kind of nice that you've got some like USB plugs and whatnot over here. This is a, a good little phone station. But uh, from here, kind of the same thing. The angle doesn't really change a whole heck of a lot. Again, if there's a giant fruit bowl or something like that on the kitchen counter, it could be a little bit in the way. But you gotta remember, you know, there's all kinds of seating in this. You don't have to just sit on the sofa. It is very social. It's very cool here uh, at the end of the day. If you, you gotta sit a couple of those little kids down, you could easily sit two little kids or, you know, or three little kids or two adults over here, put on, I don't know, Shrek the third or whatever's gonna get them to settle their little bodies down. Not to mention the fact that this sofa and that dinette can be these awesome open lounges where you can just kind of stretch out and relax. Because if there's one thing dads love to do, 
We love to just lay down and say, I'm not sleeping, I'm just resting my eyes. And to give you an idea how long this thing is, if I stretch out here, hey! I told you last time, get your shoes off the couch! Okay, I got what I remembered last time. All right, shoes are up, but here you go. I'm gonna lay down, stretch out as long as I can here. My head's not touching, my toes are not touching. This is a sweet, sweet lounge space. Because just like this, nothing says this has to be just a dinette. The table removes. You can get the table totally out of the way here. Now, if you wanted to, you could take off, say like the head and the foot cushion. Um, if, if you needed the extra room, this will fold down into one big long sleeper. But even just during the day, I mean, this is a cool little, you could hang out here, watch TV kind of lounge space. You could have a couple people around. Maybe you're having like a rainy day kind of situation. Everyone's stuck inside. You need just the extra open flow space and floor space right here. And those of you who saw our previous video on this, you remember, this is Hammer Dance certified. You can do the MC Hammer, can't touch this video. Uh, the other thing that you can do with this is you can do a, a little bit of, uh, say, like RB yoga, or, or maybe you're, uh, uh, you know, you're, you, you gotta do the funny little, like, oh yeah, back stretcher position. Oh God, I'm stuck. Oh God, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Oh God, I pulled something. Oh, I pulled something bad. And then, once you're done helping your chiropractor uh, buy a yacht with your frequent visits from doing uh, bathroom yoga and dinette yoga, I want to throw another idea at you. So that's your dining table over there. That's the pedestals. Here's the thing. It's a pedestal table. That's not my favorite. But there's a less than $40 solution to this. You can get a set of folding legs that you can just screw into the bottom of that instead of those pedestal bases. And just like magic, now you have yourself a free floating table. So imagine for just a second, if you will, you could steal the table from the rear uh, back crusher dinette. You could bring it over here to the Super Nap and Dad Lounge. You could do anything you want with it. Or here's another thought. You could take that same free floating table and you could bring it in here in the middle room for use of, you know, craft room, office, den. And again, we'll get back to here in a second, but there's, there's so many different uses and purposes. And this floor plan is so flexible. And frankly, uh, a screw gun and less than $40 could make it even more user-friendly and flexible for you. You may notice, by the way, this is completely carboless. I had a very good look at that when I was down there uh, breaking my back, by the way. Um, I do my own stunts. Not that I should, but I do. <laughs> uh, we've got a standard 15,000 BTU air conditioner. It is whisper ducted. It's a quieter Coleman unit, so it's double quiet in here. Uh, additionally, Jayco uh, offers a second factory air on this because it's standard 50 amp, where you can get yourself up to 30,000 BTUs of cooling power, which is the same as Big Bird, Eagle, North Point, Pinnacle, etc. Um, this is, you get a little reflection of me. Thankfully, I'm wearing my hat, so you're not going to get blinded by the light, uh, revved up like a deuce, another runner in the night. Um, but the TV is at a absolute no neck record straight across from the master, uh, kind of seating. But again, depending on how big you are, you could sit, uh, in multiple places and be comfy. Um, or have a good viewing angle. Electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster down there. Another thing I want to point out to you, it's a little black on black here in the, uh, craftsman decor. Both sides of our uh, dinette have household and USB plugs. So remember when we were on the other side of the sofa, I showed you household and USB plugs. Both sides of the sofa, effectively both sides of the dinette have it. And again, every window in this opens for awesome, awesome airflow in here. And I wanna talk about the uh, refrigerators real quick because this thing gives you a number of different refrigerator options. So real quick, what we're looking at here is a 12 volt DC compressor fridge. You have a dedicated pantry next to it. Remember how I said you have a pantry contained within the slide out though? Well, to me, this is really important because no matter what refrigerator you get, you always have at least one really good pantry. This being, I think your bigger pantry, you could convert that into a hanging closet space. Those shelves are removable, which is nice. You've got like a little kind of phone charger station in that little middle island pillar right there. But back to this situation, the standard refrigerator over here is an eight cubic foot two-way gas electric. We're looking at a 12 volt, 10.7 cubic foot uh, compressor fridge upgrade. You can also substitute this refrigerator and sacrifice that left-hand pantry for a 13 cubic foot gas electric four-door two-way fridge freezer which does allow a little bit better travel access, by the way. We will see this closed up in road mode in a minute. 
and I'm always interested in feedback. Would you rather sacrifice the one pantry on the left and get a bigger two-way uh, uh, passive absorption fridge? Do you like the 12-volt option with the double pantries? Because, you know, you figure maybe it's a bunkhouse. Maybe you're using it like that. Maybe you need lots of dry storage. I don't know that there's really a wrong answer. I think it's just the one that works for you. And I just want to make sure that we're kind of in tune with that and building things properly for general stock here at Halo RV. Uh, entertainment unit up top. Jayco actually runs not just HDMI wiring because uh, a lot of things are HD capable. Then they don't. They run extra HDMI wiring and give you some outlets up there in case you want to put in like a Blu-ray unit or something like that. A little bit of bonus storage above the dinette. That's not necessarily uncommon. But what I wanted you to get to see is down here. They give you these handy sliding totes, which you don't have to use but they do make it very easy to get to the storage under the dinette. You can get to the storage under the rear of the dinette from inside the camper. You don't necessarily have to, and I'll show you that when we go outside. And in recent years, I've started calling this a pantry tainment center, but actually I was thinking back the other day, this is something my, my grandfather used to always call his Baptist medicine cabinet. That was always where he kept his uh, whiskey corn mash stuff back there. My grandmother knew he was sipping on it. He was always acting like he was getting a book. We knew what he was doing. It was this fun little dance that my grandparents had. It's, it's funny those little memories you have of camping, you know. Also, you haven't seen a lot of drawers right over here in the island. Uh, the island is asymmetrical, which means that, you know, you can have the sink being used and still have some counter space. Not to mention, when you're not fighting the sink, you can have bigger drawers and more drawers. And I think they did this correctly. You have both a big space for a wastebasket as well as a shelf on the left-hand side for your smaller stuff, like your, uh, say, dish soaps and all those kind of things. Now, there's always a debate. With a middle room, should the door be off the kitchen? Should it be uh, off the hallway? Well, this one, it gives you both. And what I like about it is how it kind of, it gives it more of a come and go kind of feeling, but with sliding pocket doors over here, you can close it off however you want to. So you come in door number A, go out door number B, whatever works for you. Door number A, number B. I didn't even say that on purpose. I'm just that stupid naturally. Wow, hashtag natural talent. But look at this, this is a trifold sleeper sofa. But just like we saw on the dinette, those side stands have household and USB plugs on both sides. Another thing that this has here is what I like to call the move bunk. Get out the way. Because even with my scrawny little chicken arms, that's all it takes. You can just lift it up there. It latches in place, locks itself in place. You can leave it there for transit. It's not a bad idea to pull it down in transit, but in theory, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to leave it up like that. It's just an, another simple, easy thing you can do. You can use it again as a bunk room. You can use it uh, as an office space. You can do a little bit of whatever you want with it. And I mentioned how that's a sleeper sofa. I figure at some point I should actually give you a look at it in sleeper sofa mode. What I like about this one, the sofa doesn't go all the way up against the base of that cabinet across from the uh, the slide out. So, you know, if you are if you are sleeping two people in here, one person can always get out of bed, you know, at night, like maybe you gotta use the bathroom or whatnot. And just to give you an idea of the storage, Man, there's, I'll tell you what, you could probably put at least a 40 inch TV in there if you're so inclined. And by the way, this is all just like the kitchen. This is sealed, uh, pressed edge, sealed membrane kind of countertop space. Even when you leave the kitchen, you get the same stuff all the way through here in these Eagles. They're very consistent that way. Now I'm actually gonna start in the bathroom with the lights off. I talk about it, I just don't show it very often. It's not super impressive during the daylight hours, that little single blue light right there. I call it the Labatt Coors blue light, whatever you want to call it. Um, it. It'll make the whole shower glow at night though, so you can see what you're doing. Another thing that's kind of cool, and it is good again for those evening hours, but I call it the morning mirror. It's a nice little backlit indirect thing, so it, it, the, the lights aren't exactly just stabbing you in the eyes. You can see the sink enough if you gotta wash your hands, brush your teeth. You're waking up early, you're work camping, you don't want to disturb everybody, but of course, oh, you do have, you know, full-on bright lights. Kiss me, right Good old Gremlins. I love that movie. Are they making a third Gremlins? Did I hear something about that? They should. Anyway, Max Air Vent fan up top here, but a different kind. You can actually open and close the roof vent just with that little tab right there, which is kind of cool. It's effectively like a rain blocker. We have a one, two, three pair of drunken octopi... Octop octopuses? Octopodes? 
It's Latin in origin. Octopodes? Is that correct? I never remember. I never remember. Now, over here, this toilet. They left you plenty of room when you're getting out of the shower. When the sliding door is open like this, the toilet paper holder is right in your way. But I gave you a picture here. If when the sliding door is closed, which is probably how it's going to be if you're doing your business, it's out of the way enough. It's kind of hitting you in the knee. I don't know that this is the fluffiest, friendliest arrangement, but it's, I don't know, it's not bad. I was really glad to see very quickly Eagle HT got rid of that roller door that, yeah, I'm just going to say it, uh, it sucked. Nobody liked it. I'm glad they got rid of it. And they went to this kind of on-the-track shower door. What I like about that, too, when it's on the track, it's really hard for water to splash out of that very easy entry shower right there. And with this radius bar up top here, it's actually going to give us a little bit more elbow room. Real quick, though, speaking of room, a little look at the headroom in here with my shoes and my hat. I am right up to the ceiling level with my hat and stuff, but without that, without my shoes and my hat, I would have probably an inch, inch and a half above my head. And I'm about 6'3", by the way, for reference. That's a 30 by 36 inch shower. We've already kind of had a quick little look over here, but let me open this up so you can see some bathroom storage. And I, I always try to be fair. If I see something I wish I could see differently, I say something, I wish. Left or right shelf was removed so that I had room for a little wastebasket in the bathroom. It's not a major thing. But wouldn't that be nice? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Now over here, you notice you've got, well, first of all, full Lipitor medicine cabinet storage behind the back lip morning mirror, but you got this big old enclosure right here. And if you're noticing that sticker, you see, wait a minute, is this washer dryer hookups? And why, yes it is, person who didn't ask. <laughs> so this closet space is actually shared. We're in the bedroom now. It actually can pass through from the bathroom to the bedroom, or you could partition it off, you could block that off. You see how there is hanging space above? They give you a, a shelf down here, and there's uh, double dresser drawers. I'll get you a better angle on that in just a second. But you can, there's, there's a lot of personal storage space here. Or you could turn the hanging space into a combo washer and dryer prep space. But I need your feedback on something. Jaco asked me to ask around about this. This is the driver's side bedroom wall over here. What if that was just a closet slide? So that if you wanted to, you could still have hanging clothes storage and have a combo washer dryer. Or do you think it's fine how it is? Let me know. Leave some, leave some feedback. Leave some comments below. So get my sweaty face out of the way. Like if you were laying in bed, this is roughly what you would see right here. You got TV hookups straight across from you. Handy little kind of jacket or maybe like a dog leash sort of hanger sort of thing going on right down there, you know? It's just an, an empty, unused wall space, so I didn't want to waste it. I said I'd get you a better look at the dresser drawer storage. I've got the bottom one pulled basically all the way out. The one on top can come out a little bit further. Couple little notes here for you. This is designed to be uh, a TV space, obviously. But you, I think you could almost use this like a little bit of a laundry hamper. I think you could shove some clothes in there if you weren't going to use it for TV space. Not a ton, but maybe enough to get like yesterday's clothes out of the way. I don't know. Just an idea that came at me. Maybe I wouldn't even do that. Maybe it's not even a good idea. Just, just something I thought of. Uh, your bedroom lights have their own light switch. But this RV has a version of the BM Pro system. You can use your phone to remote control all of the lights on this RV but you don't have to because they all still just have a normal switch. And that, by the way, is called a thermistor. That is a temperature sensor. So that if you want to uh, control the temperature off your phone, you can, or you can just walk over to your uh, control system and, and use it there. Now remember, that second air conditioner is an optional piece of equipment that we're looking at today. It will always be 50 amp and second air standard, however. And then as we come down here, uh, important thing I want to note. Now, if you've seen my previous videos, you know the rant I'm about to go on, but a 60 by 80 True Queen is a standard bed in this. We have optioned this one to feature a 70 by 80 uh, RV King bed. Now, you do not change the bedroom side cabinets when you do that. The only thing that changes is we get a wider mattress and the decking under the bed becomes a little bit wider. So if you want to convert this, if you prefer a queen, no big deal. Um, all, all we have to do is shave a couple inches off that decking. You can go to any mattress store you please, get the queen bed that you want, and there you go. You're good to go. Because you notice the bed base is always a queen. Now, if this had a queen and you wanted to go up to a king, that becomes harder to do. That is why we build it this way, because it's easier to pivot, easier to adjust. And if you already want the king, ha, you're good to go. Now, if we notice on the side of this bedside cabinet here, there's a pair of switches. One is for that single blue evening reading light. 
The other is for just the light above this side of the bed. You have uh, other individual controls matching that on the other side of the bed. So they've added more wiring, more switches to give you more individual lighting control. Uh, wide open side stands, very CPAP friendly. There's household and USB plugs there and just an amazing view outside of this thing. Right over here in the door side where you can see the kids yelling at each other. Closing up the slides in road mode. And if you like seeing them with the slides closed up like this, if you haven't done so already, leave us a little comment that says, hey, thanks for road mode halots. Hit the like button on the video. Subscribe if you haven't, if you appreciate the extra efforts that we go to here for you. So from the bedroom working back, obviously bedroom bathroom access is easy. Now, there's always a bit of a debate. Should the door for the middle room be in the hallway? Should it be off the kitchen? And again, in this case, it has both. And that's interestingly going to give us a little bit more access, although I don't know how much more functional it is. And you'll see what I mean. Because usually on a middle bunk room or something like that, you close the slides and that's it. You see the side of the slide and, and you ain't getting to nothing else. But with this one having that double door, you can actually slide to the left, slide to the right, and uh, do a little cupid shuffle. Now, I am a fairly thick dude. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip this camera around so that you can see what I'm doing here. I am squeezing my way through, but you know, I can squeeze my way through here. Now I've got a 200 pound squishy dad bod. I'm thick in the middle section. I got chicken legs, okay? Um, that's my body type. So I don't know how well that's going to work for you. Now. Even if something isn't the best, I still show it in my videos because this is a lot of money. I want you folks to know what you're getting into, especially if you're gonna work with us here at Halo RV. I want you to have the best expectations possible so that you can find the right RV and have the best time possible. And then you tell other people, hey, go see Halos. They really took care of me. That's the goal here. And with that in mind, there's one disappointment I have with this and I hope it gets fixed down the line. It's so close to opening the refrigerator i can't even stand it if that was just moved half an inch that way we'd be able to get to the refrigerator in transit now we can get to the freezer in transit very easily so that's you know it's it's not that the second entry door doesn't get us anything it's just that they, they were so, so close so close I tell you what, that's got a good look to it. Uh, white, black, silver trucks, they would match up with this thing beautifully. Frankly, just the colors are generic enough. Red, blue, I don't care. I think it's going to look good just about on any truck back there. I don't, I mean, what do you guys think about that? Do you need to match the color of your vehicle with the color of the fifth wheel, or is it just kind of like one of those really cool things when they do line up? I'll tell you what's really cool. Look at that big honking awning. Holy crap crap dude covers the entry door the camp kitchen's right in the middle you can get to your baggage door and the reason that it's so big if you notice they extended the uh awning up into the gooseneck area past that extra large bedroom window so if you want some rainy day uh bedroom airflow you can get it we have ourselves an anti-slam entry door you've got that extra large folding handle right here so you've always got something nice to hold on to when you're climbing in and out and so you don't have to throw your shoulder out Eagles are outfitted with the self-supporting, I like to call them zero G, zero gravity kind of Moride stable steps. And what's nice, this is that newer generation where uh, to <laughs> make it connect with the ground, that's all it takes. And there's no more of those annoying little push pins to adjust it. There's just a simple little silver button back there. You push, the leg retracts, simple as can be. Now over here, smarter class features like your uh, speakers. Notice how it's the speakers are mounted down in the skirting. It's, it's not a four inch hole drilled in the sidewall and the speakers are down low where you can actually hear them down here instead of all the way up top where the only person that gets to hear them is the neighbor and they never like hearing your music. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to record this today is because I had an, a, just a complete moron attack the first time I recorded this. This is now a uh, Blackstone griddle outfitted. Now you might be looking at it going, uh, wait, where, where's my griddle? Well, right now there's a little shortage on the Blackstones, but what's nice about this is Blackstone has this set up in the easiest way possible for you to get these. The Blackstone griddle is included with this model, standard. Um, you will basically receive a little voucher. If you get a Jayco RV that's supposed to have a Blackstone griddle that doesn't, you will just mail the voucher to Blackstone as soon as they're available. They mail it to your house. You don't even got to go traipsing back across the country to go get your griddle from your original dealer.
simple. But the first time I had recorded this, I had this table pivoted 90 degrees the other way, which is fine, it can do that. But I said, guys, you can't really open the drawer with that in the way. And, and some of my viewers who are way smarter than me, obviously said, hey, dummy, uh, turn the Blackstone thing and you can still get in, in and out of that drawer if you want to. And I was like, huh, yeah, that makes a shocking amount of sense. <laughs> now, quick little note, outside kitchen refrigerators are almost exclusively 110 household shore power. I wish 12 volt refrigerators were a little more readily available in outside camp kitchens, but the sizing, and I understand that the supply and the pricing just really isn't widely available. So that's kind of the what. We've got ourselves some galvanized rolled steel, USB and household outlets. Now that is a mount for a Furion lit Bluetooth speaker. I love those things, they sound great. I own two of them, by the way, that's no joke. I keep one just in my shower so I can sit there and listen to myself with that shower reverb sounding good. Man, you sound good singing in the shower, don't you? Meanwhile, anytime I'm in the shower, my wife and kid put in uh, noise dampening uh, headphones because they just can't uh, stand the screeching. <laughs> Never mind. Um, motion activated lighting on both sides of the pass through, TV hookups, and you'll notice the entirety of the upper deck has that double sided radiant barrier material on it. Not just a single sided hot dog paper looking stuff. The double sided foil works better. So you've got an enclosed forced air heated underbelly. Uh, you've got more radiant barrier material in there. Then you've got uh, the uh, you know layering on the bedroom and bathroom deck, which goes all the way up to the pin box, by the way, all the way up the nose cap, all the way uh, across the roof and down the rear. Eagles uh, have, I I've yet to see another manufacturer provide superior published testing hot cold camp data. We can make up all the nonsense R value stories we want all day. At the end of the day, performance is what matters and Eagles have proven themselves uh, if not uh, the best among the very best out there. And again, I've yet to see anyone prove anything better. The Moride Orbital Pin Box. If you're not familiar with this, first of all, like a giant pinnacle or north point. This is a big shock dampening pin box. It actually has a couple inches of not just forward and back travel, but a little bit of side to side travel to really soak up a lot of those herky jerky jolts going down the road. But this is also one of those pivoting pin boxes. So that uh, can make this very short bed friendly. So if you got yourself a heck of a tow capacity but a shorter box on your pickup, that's where this comes into play. Now up front, there's room for four batteries and you see a big open cavity in there. A weird thing on Eagle HTs, you can get what's called the dry camp package, which will generate or prep this and then add an additional 30 pound propane tank. So 50% more propane capacity. But you can't actually get a generator on an Eagle HT from Jayco, which I think is interesting. Doesn't matter, can't do it. Just kind of pointing that out and letting you know what's available even though you can't see it here. The docking center here, like most fifth wheels, is enclosed and protected, all privatized. All of our gate valves are enclosed where they're heated. Auto leveling controls and battery disconnect up high enough where shifting cargo is not likely to smash them, which drives me crazy. I don't understand why that is not more common. And this is another reason I wanted to take another stab at this footage. Last time I did this, uh, I forgot to open that middle slide when I walked outside after road mode. Just had a total brain fart idiot attack, I guess. Down here we got our Goodyear Endurance radials, rated for up to 87 miles per hour. If it was one more, you would actually legally have to equip this with a flux capacitor because it would be capable of time travel. Um, not the optional Mr. Fusion package like you see in Back to the Future 2, however. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm a nerd. Um, more ride suspension package there. That, the Goodyear tires, the Dexter axles, the wet bolt fasteners, that is what Eagle calls the four star ride and handling package. And because this has that shock dampening more ride pin box, this actually does have the same five star handling package as a North Point and a Pinnacle, the big brother to the Eagles. Now what's cool here though is the construction Almost all the features is essentially exactly the same as the Big Brother Luxury Jayco fifth wheels, which is why it has the same warranty as the Big Brother Luxury Jayco fifth wheels. We're slide awning ready all the way around. You got those maximum airflow sliding tinted windows right there. J Smart lighting, by the way, is another very cool thing this has. If you flip down your right blinker, most RVs, that tail light is the only thing that goes But on an Eagle, or any Jayco travel trailer or fifth wheel actually, all of your marker lights and additional clearance lights at the top of the RV back here will also blink along uh, with the uh, turn signals so that other people on the road got a better idea of what you're doing. 
plus the white element in those taillights and you see that extra light bar above the rear camera prep, uh, those also ignite so that you can see behind you. And it's not just rear camera ready, it is also side camera ready. Little look at the storage in the back of that giant uh, kind of loungy dinette thing that we looked at before. You can get to it from the inside. It's nice that you don't have to. I also, look at this, just a smart attention to detail. Even where you're not looking, you see that rubber stopper for those totes right there? That's the kind of stuff like nobody does because you can't see it. So they don't tend to spend money where you're not looking. That's just not the Jayco way. And Eagle HT was the first in this class out there to standardize a 3,000 pound towing hitch. You see the safety chain hooks in the four-way wiring harness that helps define the difference. Now, pardon my stupid Adidas footprints down here. By the way, the Adidas are the new New Balance for dads. Check that out. That may or may not be true. I'm not sure. I don't exactly set the trends. I'm not the most trendy individual. But we're up top here on Jayco's Magnum Truss roofing system, rated to hold more weight per square foot than anybody else in this class and category. We've got ourselves the standard 15,000 BTU Coleman Whisper ducted air conditioner back here. Coleman air conditioning units being quieter organically. And then up front is that optional second 15,000 BTU air conditioner also tied into the ducting. The WineGuard Air 360 Super Bucket System, not actually its name. This is your TV antenna, by the way. That can also have a uh, like a LTE like Wi-Fi extender thing plugged into the ceiling on the inside where that's located if you want to upgrade to some sort of data connectivity. Now, as we work our way up through here, you see the uh, roof solar prep over here next to one of the roof attic vents, which is that white hockey puck. Jayco does offer a factory solar package, and if you want to, you can go solar crazy adding more stuff up here. Keep in mind, if you go really, really crazy, you're going to have to upgrade your charge controller and whatnot. We are quality control testing this RV on arrival as we speak. Our QC guy is inside checking all the electric stuff. Giving the awning just a quick uh, once over, watching that come in and out. We're not going to leave it out too long on a rainy day, of course, because, you know, then it becomes a sail in the wind. And sail in the wind, that almost sounds like Tay in the Bree or whatever. Tay in the wind. Like, remember that movie, Nell? Tay in the wind. <laughs> Bet you didn't expect to get a Nell reference today. <laughs> I didn't expect to be given one either. Now, this guy right here, different kind of Max Air vent fan cover. Uh, basically does the same thing as the ones that stick up further like you're used to seeing, but it's all built in from the factory level and the vents to open and close that are on the inside of the RV. So it doesn't have to crank open and close quite so far. A little more protective for that rainy day airflow. So thank you very much for joining us, folks. Before you leave, check the link in the video description where I've left a link for our original previous walkthrough of this full RV where you get to see it in modern farmhouse decor, whereas this is the, the warm, welcoming American craftsman. I think they both look great. I would love to hear from you guys which one you like a little bit better because your votes may very literally change the ratios in which we stock these here. I do think we're going to continue to keep a little bit of both. And if you appreciate getting to see both in full detail like this, Hit the like button, subscribe and follow along, and remember, we don't do hidden dealer fees, we just do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy hail at camping, everyone. Tay in the wind. <laughs> so stupid. Somebody, Look up the clip that I'm talking about from the movie Nell with Jodie Foster and leave a link to it in the comment section. I need a laugh today.